Yes. So do the rest of us. That's 3.5. That's not 2.5. She's leaving at 2.45. I know. Evan's got a haircut, so. Well, that's important. Yeah. Uh, now everything's important. Okay, we're going to open the meeting mm -hmm. at 107, which is a continuation on uh, February, uh, March 6th, 2014. A uh, continuation of the meeting on Tuesday, March 4th. Present are John McLaughlin, Diane Coombs, Abby Camp, David Barham, and Don Hill Holgate, and myself, Linda Williams. Um, we will be taping the meeting. We have an audio tape and a uh, TV tape. Anybody else would like to tape it, let me know. Anybody want to? There's something missing under consent. Now, James may have taken it off for another reason because I wasn't quite sure what happened to it. Madigan was on, was posted, but it's not on there. It's supposed to be under consent. Uh, Lady Bird was something we couldn't hear the other day from the forum. Well, the rest of it looks like it's, like it's there, except that um, we can't hear Doyster, the hardscaping. It was not on Tuesday's agenda, and it wasn't on the original Thursday's agenda, so I don't know about the hardscaping that was supposed to go over to the beginning of next week and be posted, so I just assume hold on to number two. The garage was appropriately there. Um, Anybody else in the room see anything that's not supposed to be there or supposed to be there? Okay. I do have a question. Which 79 one? 79 EPR, 79 Point Road. I've been held for today. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that was on. I had that on also. Where did that go? Is it not, not on there? Not on there. This is not the way to do it. And um, Hallie Land, 2425, I believe that's where it came. Yeah, we didn't get that. We didn't get that. Those they wanted to go over to 18th. And we didn't get that until after this yeah. was already done. Yeah. So. so Carrie, which one is supposed to be on there? It was on the original posting. 79 EPRO, the new dwelling, I assume it's 79 year point, right? I can't remember the details. That please. was because we thought it would be helpful for questions of the old house, so we didn't hear any test of the Right. Right. right, and we had it on there, so we'll just yeah. put it back on there. Okay, so that would be put Madigan back on consent, put Doyster hardscaping <coughs> off till next week. He already knows that. Um, add 79 EPR Road um, back on there. Holly Lamb, 24 and 25, are being held to the 18th at the applicant's request because he's away. I think that's it. Does somebody want to motion that agenda with those oh, changes? So moved. Diane's made a motion to approve the agenda with those changes. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, one question right from the top down. What, what were they? Madigan. Duster? Uh, no, wait a minute. Madigan was supposed to be under consent. Right. Okay. That's uh, 253 Madigan Road, if I, if I recall. 223? Yeah. Two, thank you for okay. that. Sit down. Yeah. Um, two number two, Doyster was supposed to go over till Tuesday. The both of them? No, just number two. Oh. <coughs> Tuesday. And then we're adding 79 at the bottom. Just add 79 EPR road. E E P R Eel Point Road. Oh, okay, right. That's a new dwelling that was supposed to be on, and then. Um, I was supposed to be under views for March fourth. I was business. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, but it, so it goes with Lady Bird. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had two with Lady Bird. But I sent the agenda in yesterday. I don't know what happened to it. Um, and number twenty four and twenty five are going to the eighteenth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You want to hear it today? Now this is this is the wrong agenda because we didn't have we didn't have uh, one of them in the box and it was back on here so I don't know what happened here. That one. That one was. I think that you're talking about. Started with a B, I think. It's like number two under one of the whichever portion of the agenda that was already approved and they, this is one of the problems we have a couple of them because they signed them up again. All right, so we already did Bedrick yeah, yeah, or whatever his name yeah, was, Budarek or whatever it was. 
something like that. I don't want to pack up the Okay. All right. Somebody want to make a motion to approve Madigan? I will approve right. Madigan Diane's being put on consent. Diane's made a motion, guys, to approve Madigan. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. John, Aye. on consent, you're abstaining? Yes. Okay. So that's four in favor and one abstention. Okay. Now, I want to do something because David isn't going to last long. Does anybody know off the bat if they have David as part of their quorum? Right off the bat. What's, which one is yours, Matt? 17 broad. What is that? This is just for the demos. Uh, it should be for the revisions as well. All right, so I'm just seeing the move demo and the demo on the garage. Well, the demo is supposed to be out, not in the middle. It's just move edition. Um, okay. yours, what? So if you're just doing demos, I don't think I'm, you need me to interfere with that. No, but the, the first one is move or alteration. Move demo edition. So I think the first one does include the new edition. Yes, it does. Okay. Probably number four. Hold on. Tara, which one? Uh, number six. Okay. Um, Ed? Uh, number 18. Okay. And also 42 Skyline Drive. Uh, okay, so that's Richmond? Yeah. Richmond, Richmond. Okay. Rob? Nine. Okay. With everybody's permission, we're going to take those first because David isn't feeling well. <coughs> do you have a. Do you have I don't a, think it's part of my call. Do you want to look at. Um, Hartrick. Hartrick? Which is number three? There may, the be, there may be others. He may not need me for his quorum. Yeah, I just want to check the ones that people know that you're part of them. Hard trick. And then we're going to open meeting walk and things. We're going to deal with those quickly. Can you run down a quick one? No, oh, you don't have your. I don't have today. Linda, John, Jason. and Jason. What is it with your project? Come on, guys. He doesn't have a quorum. Slow weeks. I show up. Well, let's go to the beginning of Tuesday's meeting. Is here last Tuesday from Tuesday before? Mm -hmm. the first what number are you talking about? Number three. Yeah. Number three? Yep. Yeah. Where is that? The only other thing I can tell you to do, it's hardscaping. 23 banks? <laughs> no, three. 318 milestone. Under is to withdraw it and resubmit it for Tuesday. It doesn't require public notice. Why would I want to do that? Because so then you'll get back with five people. Or take your chances Tuesday. If it doesn't work Tuesday, withdraw and resubmit immediately. <laughs> take your chances. Oh, my God, how people here on Tuesday? Is, everybody, is Jason's usually here Tuesday? Is Don going to be here Tuesday? I will like, be here for part of the meeting. The beginning? So yeah, the later part of the meeting. All right, we'll hang on to it on Tuesday until she gets here. We'll just do it Tuesday. Who gets it? I'm going to be, I have something I have to get to. What number is 18? And then I'll be out. Be out well, after. Number three. <coughs> okay. Oh, three so 18. Let's, okay. Yeah, so let's back that so up. So I will have a quorum. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we'll we'll have a quorum on it'll, Tuesday. It'll be later, though. When does he expire? I know. It's, I've already put an extension on, so. That's what I thought. We got the extension a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's not half of my cost. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, the spring's around the corner. Yes, I know. I can't see it at the moment since it's sunny and it's snowing. That's a whole other problem. All right, so Madigan was approved. Now we go to um, what I want to do right now. We have to take them out of order. David needs to be here for this discussion. Under other business, we're going to bring up the open meeting law complaints. I'll explain them very quickly so we don't waste a lot of time on those. The open meeting law complaint for August 13th there was a open meeting law violation. Town Council has suggested that we motion to say that there was an open meeting law violation and then vote on that and then separately vote to say how we're going to make the remedy. What happened was is that the town clerk had just about started the you got to get them in by 10 o'clock, got to get them in by 2 o'clock thing. James filed it at 2.47 and they check them. He didn't he forgot to call. We weren't used to calling them to file our stuff. So he didn't call 
And by the time the um, okay came back on Monday morning at, after 10 o'clock, he didn't realize that they hadn't posted it on Friday because it was in the town clerk's office on Friday. So it was not posted by the town clerk until 10.08 thereabouts on Monday morning, thus putting August 13th into jeopardy as far as the open meeting law violation. So he said, go ahead and find that there was a violation, and then we'll deal with the remedy after that. Does anybody need any proof of this? We just finally all got the information today. Uh, I have a question on it. Why, why are they taking up for this? They don't take it up for town clerk. They had it in time. It doesn't matter. They, we had two complaints. He's got them. They should have been emailed to you guys. But we have two complaints for August 13th, formal complaints. <coughs> and we have to vote on them before the 14 days is out, which is like now. So town council asked for them to be put on, I think it's Monday. He asked to be put on today's agenda to vote that there was an open meeting law violation. That's one vote. The second vote would be how we're going to remedy that. Since he has never seen in all the years he's practiced any court rescinding all 30 of those building permits. Is there anybody that doesn't have a copy of these? I have copies right here. Like Johnny, do you have Oh. You, got one Tuesday night, I you have copies of. I'll, I'll take them. It should be in your email. They may be. <laughs> or not. Just the work group circle email. Has yes, I said, that's why inbox. I finessed it yesterday, and I said that's enough of that discussion. Also, uh, mm -hmm. we have an email from the town council as far as how to approach this. Do you want to? It was recommended. Yeah, no. So it was re it was suggested since this is still in litigation that we not release town council's privileged email. Okay. So that's not on the table. So does somebody want to make a motion that there was a violation of the open meeting law for August thirteenth? Because uh, can I make one comment before you move? what? Uh, just we understand what your position is because you're representing Sloan, who yes. is actually the target of the open meeting law complaints. That, they that, want to rescind it, and that's not happening here. That's right. 34 B Wall Street is uh, my client. But just for the record, I would like it noted that the open meeting law requires a complaint to be filed within 30 days of um, the event or, or reasonable discovery of the event. And we're now six or eight months later, um, and the event was a public meeting, a public notice meeting. That, you know, we're way past the deadline. If the commission wants to uh, affirm the entire schedule from that time, I, that, that, I'm not going to object to that. Um, but I would like it noted that the complaint is well past the deadline. But there is, Steve, as you know, in the statute, it's from when you found out. Yeah, it's from when it was reasonably discovered. Reasonably discovered. And not, they didn't yeah. discover it until two weeks ago, but it was posted. It was taken up. It was on remand, which was everybody knew that. It came off of a January issue that was denied and remanded by the selectmen and voted in favor of on the 13th. Yeah. With town council sitting right there. So it was on previous agendas in July and then August, and it was duly noticed before that. Right. So yeah, there I is that issue, and so if somebody wants to make a motion that there was an open meeting law violation, which there was, we're not questioning their standing, but you're correct, we should probably include in the motion that it would appear on the face of it that the open meeting law complaints were made after the requirement of 30 days but we're taking no position on notice for that case but we should put it in what we're what we're actually voting does everybody understand that mm -hmm. so David do you want to try to craft a motion um, my, mo <coughs> my motion would be that based on the testimony of the chair we find that the HDC and the record just say the record and, and the record that the HDC uh, committed an open meeting law violation. Well, I say that way. That there was an open there meeting was law an violation. Because we didn't do anything wrong. Please, let him we finish. Didn't know. Right, I, 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 no, it's not what he's saying, John. He's making a motion that has to be crafted according to town council a certain way. Well, I got nothing. No message from the so town council. I don't know what you're talking please, about. I don't. You want to give him a copy? You know, I, 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 I accept, said that. I accept the press. Yes. Uh, and it should uh, be clerical comment. error. Clerical error. So it, there was an open meeting law violation. My motion is that we acknowledge there was an open meeting law violation due to a clerical error for the meeting held on August 13th, 2013. 
based on the record and the testimony. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. John, where do you stand? I'm opposed. You're the opposed? Motion. Yes. There was an open meeting law violation. I'm not going to discuss it. I have not heard anything from town council, and you're giving me words that he said this or that. You I don't have, know that he said it. Does he have a copy of this letter or not? No, yes. he told me to take it off the table. No. The board members can have it. We're not releasing it to the public. Let's not keep this Shh. up. Would everyone like it? Come. This is, yes, please. No, this is started this morning just with other crap. All right, so that's it. The remedy, David, would be that we will at some point in the near future schedule all of those items for uh, reaffirmation. You just want a motion that we place them back on the agenda for reaffirmation? Yes, that's the solution to remedy the situation. Do we want a date certain for that to occur? Well, we're trying to figure that out because some of the stuff under town council was voted on and some stuff wasn't. And the stuff that wasn't voted on doesn't need to be there. So we have to go through the minutes to figure it out. So uh, sooner rather than later, basically. Shortly. Uh, uh, then I, I move at the earliest possible moment yeah. the HDC vote to affirm the decisions taken at the August 13, 2013 meeting. Did you get that, Terry, that the remedy is going to be that we're going to reaffirm them? Is that a motion or is that you guys are voting on? Yes. yes. David's made a motion that the remedy to cure the open meeting law violation will be to reschedule those items on the August 13th, 2003 meeting at the earliest possible time to reaffirm those votes taken at that meeting. That's your motion, David? That's my motion. Okay. All in favor of David's motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Madam Chairperson, this immediately now that it's been open to us members, it is a public document. No, it is not. Town Council, right on the bottom, I read it is it. privileged, John, and it cannot be released to the public without a vote of this board. I didn't say that. I said it became a public document right now. Not from Town Council. It is exempt unless you vote to release it to the public, which we're not doing. Well, you know everything. Okay, go ahead. You don't think I haven't had this discussion already? It's not being released, John. If we find it's released, it's going to be a violation of that. So that's fine. Now, we have a second one. Oh, there are two... Both sisters, both twins, filed them. So that, David, I assume, is related to both open meeting law complaints for August 13th, correct? That is correct. Terry, you got that? No. There were two open meeting law violations, one from each sister. And that vote pertains to both of them, okay? One from Maureen Murphy and one from Eileen Murphy. Okay, then they just happened to be standing in the office. And brought up that there was an, they claimed there was an open meeting law violation for, for February 20th, 2014. However, and that was only one complaint there, there is no open meeting law violation. The agenda was posted at eight, at actually Monday night of holiday week for Thursday. There's nothing to do with the Tuesday meeting, it's a Thursday meeting. It was sent in on Monday night. I called them in the morning at 8.15. It was posted by 8.30 for Tuesday, so it was way ahead of 1 o'clock. The date stamp, I didn't realize I could take all the language out of the little box. I thought I could only take the date and the time off, so I took, I took those off so they could put the new date and new time in when it was filed, you know, revised schedule. I didn't have the form that you put a revised one on, so it went in. Here it is. It needed to be filed over the top of the one that was filed Friday, which was incorrect. So... I called, it was posted, sat there until 2 o'clock when somebody decided to pick up something that they shouldn't have and repost it at 2.07. However, it was posted from 8.15, 8.30 till 2.07. Then they posted an earlier version at 2.07 and re-stamped it. Why, we don't know. But 
It was continuously posted from before 1 o'clock on Monday, and I have the little, they automatically send you a little we posted it thing, so I have that. So we have all the record that it was posted ahead of time. And I checked the agenda that they posted at 2.07, and I checked the agenda that was posted at 8.15 that I sent in, and they match. They're just reorganized in a different way, but everything was on one was on the other. Only some of them were like four times on one, you know what I'm saying? It was like errors here and there. It was cleaned up. So it's fine. And George says there is no open meeting law violation on the February 20th. So that's the vote he wants us to take for that one. Do we need to vote at all if there was yes, no violation? Yes, because they've made a formal complaint. We need to address the complaint. Same people. Same people. But the only one of them filed, I think it was more, maybe Maureen who filed on the Thursday one. So somebody want to make that motion? I make some move. Diane, okay. <coughs> Diane, you're making the motion that there was, based on the record, there was no and testimony. There was no open no. meeting law violation on February 20th. February 20th, 2014. Okay. Diane's made that motion. All in favor of Diane's motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So it's four in favor, one opposed. And then, um, David or Diane, make a uh, vote that we will send the appellant a letter to that effect. I think motion that we send the appellant a letter to that effect. Diane's made a motion to send the appellant a letter. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Yes, uh, I assume we'll send them out something in the first one because that's going to have to be dealt with. Okay. Thank you very much. Alrighty. So now we are back to Ladybird. Do we need? Do we have a quorum issue on Ladybird? No. No. Okay. Hang on a second. We will if uh, I think Abby's been there for time, but we don't have a quorum issue. Okay. So hang on one second. Don Linda and Abby. Don Linda and Abby. Hang on. Okay. All right, then we'll go to Calhoun first because we have a who's sitting on Calhoun. No, that's not a form issue. I mean, I can move David. All right, then we'll have to move up. We'll have to pass it. Richmond Development 42 Skyline. What do we have for form there? Val, do you have any idea? Yeah. Well, I know it's always preferable to have everybody, but we've got to go to the form stuff with David. Yeah, Linda, John, David. All right, we have more than enough on Richmond. Silverman, Keller's Way, Smurr. Do we have anybody from Smurr here? No. They, they, they didn't speak up. The next one that was uh, voiced was number 16. Yeah, i got to check Silverman first. Hey, Linda, I was five. I was nine on Tuesday night. So you're talking about Oliver? Yes. What do we have for a quorum on Oliver? <laughs> Everybody in the room? I've said this every week for a <coughs> weeks. Make sure you have your minutes. Make sure you know who your quorum is when you walk in the room because it takes a half an hour to dig out every one of these files one by one. Yeah, everybody on Oliver. All right, so Oliver is okay then? Yeah. Richmond is okay. What about Silverman? Did you say that was all right? No. Nope. Just to go to the main that house first. Okay. That's pretty yeah. It's like everybody on that one. Number Don, Don, David, Don. Okay. What about Brambo? Number 16, 13 Swayze Drive. All five of you were on it. So. Okay. We're done. Okay. What about 55B Pochick? I know there's a board there. You got enough? Okay. Uh, Holly Lamb's going over. What about Pharaoh's 17 Broad? I think we need a whole board on that anyway. Um, there was Josiah. Which one is yours? Uh, it's uh, Ben Hart. Number one on new business. Number two, Well, there's no board set, so we're good, right? No, we don't have any board on that yet, so yeah. you're okay. Okay. All right, it looks like we only the only one we really should have a full board on is Ferris. Matt, you want to go with that now? Sure. Oh, 
Hockamer Road. Chip, Ethan, yeah, somebody. Yeah, we uh, it's Abby, Don, Lincoln, Don. David, you're not on the gamble house. Structure should be moved, moving this to the corner preserves the public's ability to see and understand the original building. Four in favor of the idea to move. Second part of whether or not the addition is appropriate. What is proposed to go behind the structure does not match the original would make the structure 86 feet long, too long for a home. The addition should be a separate structure not connected to the original. We can find the building in the LED similar to the proposed. If were all being built in period, the main house would have been the original and the original VL, which makes no sense. The addition ought to look like it came from the later period. What was submitted was not a bad start, but it has problems. The six, six over six windows don't work in the Victorian addition. The mansard roof truck is too vertical. The top of the roof should not sit on top of the dormitory. The dorm window should not be smaller. Not concerned about the height. The freeze under the roof should be deeper. The detail of the corner piles should be matched with the main side of the recording. The entrance porch should be flat with brackets and the corner should be posed and handrails. The foundation must be different from the original building. The link between the buildings would have been built either at the time of the recording addition or later. The building should be a single window, the satellite window, and the door has the same layout pattern. 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 The roof should be lower. First person in some kind of female. Force the right onto the corner of the sidewalk. It should be pulled back a couple of feet to allow adequate landscaping. Uh, this has too much mass, about 30 feet. The legion link should match the original to reflect the former doctor's office on the site. The condition should be smaller, there's nothing going on the hill, it's most awkward. The link should be more rural and simple and detailed mass in the house. Has historic structures seen this since then? Yeah, the we read their uh, comments last time. I can repeat them if you'd like. Was, was their comment based on the Mansard or that gable that you showed us? I think the <laughs> original submission was the gable. Okay, so they have not actually taken a crack yeah, the crack off the Mansard. No. Okay, but we might want to, in sure. the meantime, send it back to historic structures, David, so That's they can see the Mansard. Was that something that the staff will be just in the file or how do we talk this? I'm not sure. If they have a motion to send it to you, it's not going to be in your schedule. Okay. Okay, Matt, what did you do? Everything circled. Uh, thank you, Mary Jo. So, why don't we start uh, on the south elevation? So, that's what the majority of the changes are. Um, Starting with the uh, the addition, uh, we made changes to the first floor windows. We made those six over nines. Uh, second floor fenestration stayed the same size. We did <coughs> drop the uh, the mansard tablature down so that the uh, window casings sit just below uh, that assembly. We actually on uh, the roof itself, we actually uh, adjusted the pitch. Uh, we brought it in uh, so it's not it wasn't quite as steep as it was previously. Um, can, I, can I back you up? I didn't understand the last comment. What were you saying about having dropped the entablature down? We um, took the, that whole assembly and uh, increased it so that the 
casing, uh, the top of the window casing on the second floor, and the entablature meet. Uh, I think that was a request. I'm not uh, seeing that on my version. Um, I'm seeing there's about six inches to eight inches in between that and the top of the window. I think previously we had almost a foot. Okay, so you're not actually on top of it. It's not on top of it, sorry. Okay. The way it looks on mine does. There's a gap there. Um, we adjusted the pitch so it's a, uh, a shallower pitch. It was previously uh, too steep. I think, David, that was your comment. Mm -hmm. uh, we also raised the height of the uh, roof so that uh, previously, in the previous incarnation, the top of the gable dormers was sitting uh, on basically the, the termination of the, that roof. So we raised it so that there's about uh, uh, at least, I think, a foot in that range from the highest dormer itself. Um, we reduced the size of the windows slightly, uh, created a, a D-type on the third floor. Uh, as far as the connector piece, you can see what we did is we removed the uh, two gable dormers along with a narrow or smaller uh, dormer. I think, Dave, you had re requested you know, an accent window, and so that one in particular, just after looking at the submission, I was wondering maybe that one does go to like a nine light as opposed to a six over six. Which, which, which one are we talking uh, that about? That would be now? the, the connecting piece connector? between the old and the new. There's no, that I single door on the second floor. I was yeah. going to say go to a smaller one. Instead of a six over six, maybe go to like a nine light. I think smaller is <coughs> the yeah. yeah. Um, as far as the entry, we've added a uh, Victorian style uh, uh, baluster and rail system. We added brackets uh, on the two corner pieces there. Again, something I think we could probably add um, on that, uh, that fascia, if you will, is to do some kind of a, a molding profile so it doesn't seem as you know, underdeveloped, if you will. I think that that would actually help you know, tie it together. We looked at putting brackets off the face of the door. Um, but the recess of that covered porch is at least, I think it's around five to six feet. So getting a bracket that would look as if it was actually functioning would have to come out somewhere in the range of five feet, um, which I think might look a little strange. So we opt to put the most on those inside corners. Um, but again, after looking at it, I think that along that face, if we could add a uh, molding profile, that would actually you know, tie it together a little bit better. Um, we shifted the building um, two feet. Uh, this is more of a site plan issue. Uh, we shifted the building. Uh, it's now two feet off the corner of the east property line on North Water Street. Previously, the corner of that <coughs> porch was literally right up on the property line. So that now is uh, two feet away, as requested. Um, there is no parking. Right? There is no parking. There, so the site plan shows parking. There's no parking. Right? So we're, just here in the landscape area. We're simultaneously in the planning board uh, as well, and that is something that we've recently submitted. Um, we added a door on the uh, west, uh, well, on the south elevation. We added a door that's on the, on the west side of the elevation, if you will, to emulate uh, some kind of a secondary entrance. Um, we did discuss the, uh, you know, the, the massing, if you will, and the thought of putting, you know, a door in that main mass. And uh, I brought a number of photographs downtown of buildings, um, you know, with uh, primary masses with no entries in them. A lot of these are familiar to you. Uh, I'll pass these around shortly, but you can see that uh, there clearly is a precedent. This is, you know, essentially a lot of these buildings were used as antecedents for our uh, design solution. Um, but per some of the requests, or I think David, you had a suggestion about that, to add that an entry on the side <coughs> of the uh, of the structure, we were able to, to add that. So. I'll save you guys some time here. I think you're familiar with all these, but I think they're relevant. You were able to add what? Um, a door <clears throat> on the left side. If you look at that south elevation. You always had a door in that Yeah. We location. actually, uh, in the initial uh, submission we did and the answered uh, option that we brought, we actually removed it, um, and so we've, we've put it back. Okay. Well, certainly, Mike, you had a flight of stairs on that side of the house. Yeah and a porch roof, yep. and they led to something that had no door off of it? Uh, I actually, I don't know if it was on the mansard, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll have to look at it. Cause it. And I know from an internal plan perspective, we actually eliminated that as a, as a means of egress. And so this door now comes out of a, of a unit. Okay. You know, if I look at the previously submitted version at the bottom of the page, yep. it's there, and right. it's substantively unchanged. Right. It's a little confusing because the, we reviewed the Mansard option. Um, 
but to keep the application consistent, we showed the submission. Um, the first question I've got is about A uh, is about A one three, and it's the third floor plan, and it seems to suggest that you're going to have a series of doors coming out of a couple of the dormers, and you're going to put air conditioning on the third floor roof, sure. which like is not something that we had understood as part of the proposal last time around. Right, and. Um, I don't know that that's an acceptable way to go. Have we got a section through that looking back toward the main house um, that shows us those doors and would show us the size of the AC equipment? I don't have one as part of this application, but I can certainly provide you with one. We does do that, have. Does five, that mean it's a flat roof in there? Yeah, if I could explain it. Actually. I could elaborate it. Yeah, um, because this is, this uh, again, the planning board, the same issue is going to come up. We basically have an opportunity to integrate a flat roof in, in between these two structures. Um, and I wanted to get it out there uh, at this stage, both with the HTC and the planning board. It's an opportunity to put some mechanicals uh, up there. Um, and I know that based on our previous you know, uh, submissions, specifically Chestnut Street Gatehouse, there was an opportunity to have some outdoor deck space in the second floor of those um, porticos. And I think the board was unanimously opposed to any kind of deck space up there. Um, it is an opportunity for us whether they're used for mechanicals, whether they're used for, you know, uh, access from that third floor unit. Um, I want to at least get it out there, get the board's opinion about it, and we can, uh, uh, you know, change it accordingly. Well, I, you know, I think any visibility of mechanical equipment on that roof whatsoever is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that if you want to manipulate the, the mansard roofs, either side of this. You've moved the roof significantly toward the street, haven't you? To create the the, the flat roof that flat the, roofed yeah. area. I mean it doesn't change in elevation and if you did put a condenser unit, you would not see it. Yeah. But it is an opportunity and you did to explore it. I think it really changes the way you see these two buildings, when that length was pushed further back, you really saw this more as two separate structures that had had a service link introduced at some stage. Mm -hmm. When you bring this wall right up to the street, that changes the way you read the building, and I'm not in favor of that change. So keep that at its narrower. You, yeah, this whole thing back. You need, you need to push it back. And if, if you need to plant AC on the roof, you know, you may need to do it at the second level and lose the bedroom in that length mm -hmm. and create a cavity in which your AC sits. Um, but I'm not looking for a, a condenser farm on, on top of this roof. And I also would want the dormers all to look like dormers. When you push a door into a dormer to get access out to AC units, the trim work changes, it looks different. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tell that something unusual is happening. So I'm not I'm not in favor of that. We have other options to put condensers. So okay. I don't mind using that condensers. I think that I'll respond based on the architectural geometries and then whatever we have left over, we'll go from there. Okay. The um you still on the floor? No, that was what I wanted to talk about on the floor plan. On the elevations, you know, I still have a, I've, I've got a concern about these, these two entryways. Mm -hmm. um, right now you've got this set up so that the main entry into this complex is through this secondary link. And by the time we get done with lighting and signage and everything else, it's going to acquire an importance that I really don't think it should have based on the way you're configuring the architecture to 
to tell a story about how these two structures were joined. I think it makes more sense to pursue the avenue of doing a flat Victorian porch with an entablature and corbels, a detail similar to like what you've got over the door in the link, but apply it to the left-hand side of the south elevation. And, and, you know, that you can bring out toward the street. You know, right now you've got that back from the street about, it looks like 13, 14 feet before you hit that porch. You know, I think that that porch can come toward the street, you know, another seven, eight feet. Not the building, just the porch. Just the porch. So your, your staircase would essentially come down to the corner of the building. Your porch post would be a large Victorian trimmed out porch post. Um, it wouldn't be the, a four by four stick the way it is now. Um, that whole that whole porch treatment right now is a very rural, very service stair kind of treatment. I would I would make that the way you get into the building. I don't have any problem with the door not being in the main mass itself, but I think the door needs to give you direct and obvious access to the main mass and not be in what <coughs> is presenting to the street as a service link. Okay, there you go. Um, so, conversely, if you have to have a staircase into that service link, um, I would want the staircase narrow even would entertain turning it sideways to the street as a way to direct people to the other structure if there's enough uh, if there's enough run for that set of stairs. Let me back and see. Are you showing more stairs on your elevation than you are on your plan? Uh, that's a possibility. Yeah, you are. Um, the um, the balusters that you're showing. You're showing one extra stair. Right. The balusters that you're showing are a gingerbread kind of baluster. They were different for the Second Empire style that you're trying to mimic here, and the um, the brackets that you're showing are also a gingerbread style. In Second Empire, you could use either a modillion block or a corbel, either one. Or what you could do very successfully is take the porch column detail that you developed for the other side of the building mm -hmm. and apply that left and right as pilasters Interesting. Okay. and span between and, and narrow that opening up a bit. Um, and the handrail, similarly, ought to have a more Victorian treatment. Um, it's looking a little typical Nantucket at the moment. Um, have you widened the windows at the first floor? Because I noticed that the E-type windows have got a window pane size that's wider than the D-types up above. They are slightly, <coughs> slightly wider. Is that a change from last time? It is. Okay. I don't think that's a good change. Okay. Um, I think the windows seem oversized and fat and they need to shrink down. Okay. I'm inclining at this point to think that um, the 6 over 9s probably ought to be some kind of 2 over 2 or some a larger Victorian pane. This is looking very busy. I'm not sure whether it's the I'm not sure whether it's the fact that the windows have gotten fat. Well, the, the other thing I'd point out too is potentially, yeah, I think they got, I think they're oversized. Um, but then also the shutter detail. I don't know if that accentuates it or not. The, the panel detail of the shutter matches the six over nine. I don't know if that compounds it or not. But you can certainly look at that. I, I think they, they, they typically did have shutters, so I, I'm not. I don't have a problem with that. And I think that it'll help when it comes time to pick colors to have a, a variety of different elements that pick different colors. Um, I just didn't want to include people that have shutters. Madam Chair, may I ask a quick question on yep. that point? Um, uh, one thing I would, uh, we do have a color scheme in mind, um, but I would like to get the boards input on that. Um, just to give you, I don't know if this shows us on the application, I don't think we have, because I knew it was going to come up. Because we're talking about uh, Quaker gray clabbered 
uh, white trim and a, the Essex green, which is the dark uh, green, almost black sash. Uh, that's what the thought was at this point, but I'll just keep that up. I'd love to get something put from the board. And what color are the shutters? Shutters would uh, be all, all for the dark. The, the shutters in the sash are yeah. the same color? Yeah. And what we could do the a red. Original house? It's, yellow I don't know, color. original, but right now it's yellow. Dark like everything's yellow trim. Everything's it's like monochromatic yellow, which I don't think is the original based on the no color, that's the We'd like to, but anyways, it's a discussion I think we have to have. So um, I just keep that in mind. I don't know where to go with it. Okay. Um, you've re actually reduced the um, the freeze up underneath the uh, the corpels uh, at the knees. And if you've got a built-in gutter, gutter there, it doesn't look like it would accommodate a built-in gutter. We, we, we could do it. I'm actually not that comfortable with that detail, but we could do it. So you're just going to just drip off uh, of that? That's something I have to talk about with the uh, civil engineer. I think that with this detail, you would have to integrate uh, downspouts. Um, but I think with, the, with this particular roof line, I think that we could actually transition to a built-in gutter. I don't think it would look markedly different. Well, I think you need to figure that out because this uh, detail and this elevation is not going to look right if you come along afterwards and try to hang uh, a, a standard uh, gutter and downspouts on it. Which we wouldn't do. do. We, wouldn't we wouldn't do that. Do we wouldn't do that. I mean, I'm saying that we would take the existing profile and convert and basically make that the built-in gutter. So you'd have a gap. You'd have a break in the, uh, the shingle line would stop and then the gutter uh, which is emulating, you know, the top piece of that tablature uh, would function as the gutter. I think, yeah, I, I think you ought to look at that, that whole assembly. I think that that um, needs to be restudied. Typically what you'd have is you would move the slope of that roof back inboard mm -hmm. and you'd have a, a flat area that your, that your brackets and corbels were carrying. Um, that would that would service a, a gutter, a built-in gutter, but the built-in gutter sits entirely outside the frame of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and your downspout then comes right down through the, the wood trim assembly. Mm -hmm. um, have you moved up the elevator shaft portion? You said you moved up the main roof. <coughs> yes. We have not... Uh as far as I know, we have not raised that, although I would agree with you, it looks as if we took the entire assembly and just stretched it. But it does, yeah. I can verify that, but the intent was to actually raise, by raising that section, uh, the distance of the exposed uh, uh, elevator shaft should be less. Should be reduced. I'll it looks the same. I'll verify that because I agree with you. Yeah. It looks as if it has um, I'm, I'm not finding the double dormers very persuasive on this. I think you do better with single dormers, Matt. And on the other... Uh, up in that mansard, and on the main section. Okay, gotcha. Um, all, all around. Uh, on the west elevation, you've got some tiny six over sixes that, that really look out of place. Um, if this is going to be a Victorian structure, I think perhaps some kind of Victorian feature window goes there. But the six over six doesn't look like it belongs. Those are my main concerns. Thank you, Linda. Okay, who else is on this? Oh, Abby. Um, I think the um, shutters on the new Victorian uh, part conflict with the old building, and I, maybe two over twos to make it more Victorian might be successful. Also, on the connector um, over by the Roberts house, they have. Um, this kind of two over two, like a sun porch. Mm -hmm. If this is not going to be like um, an entrance, it could be a nice connector with like that detail there. And they, um, this front entrance on the Brotherhood could be a good front entrance for your for the Victorian part mm -hmm. with the columns and the yeah. I, mean, I think that. I mean, I think we, based on David's comments, we can, uh, I mean, we have something that's similar to that right now, but I think the embellishment of the uh, post and rail and bringing it forward, I think we can definitely uh, improve upon it. No other comments. Diane? <coughs> uh, I agree with what's been said 
so far, and the, the dorm is up on the third floor. Should, I think it should be single. Yeah. I don't, if you made the link, what uh, window paint would you use? Are you going to change window paint in the Victorian? You know, you know what I'd like to do is um, analyze the first floor fenestration to see if we can't make it more successful. Um, and if we can't, I'll simultaneously look at changing all the windows on the addition to two over two. I do have some concern about that, that um, that it may be too significant of a departure from the existing structure. Right. So I'd like to just look at that. I mean, I like the idea of potentially integrating two over twos, maybe just that connector piece, so that you know, many times you'd find those were installed as essentially windscreens. Right. I think, I don't know, in the house up on industry coming down, it has two over twos, and I don't think it has quite a positive statement that, that this one has, but I'd just like to know what the windows would be in that connector, because if you change these windows, it would put it together before you got to the old house. So... We'll, we'll look at both options. Okay. That's it. Thank you. John? Yes. Um, I'm to the, uh, east elevation. Two, two metal stacks that come off that chimney. You can use a piece of slate up there like they usually do with a raised, raised portion. Okay. And it's not shown on the other two elevations okay. on the chimney. Uh, I find the mixing of the two periods, I still say uh, I can't find any in the inspectors that have that draw the connection of a uh, Victorian and Greek revival. Okay, I think there ought to be the first submission is beautiful. It looks great for the area. And I think this this is wrong. Uh, I agree with what other comments have been made. Morning window. Where are they? Um, the G's and, and H. Oh, no, I'm sorry. G's. The, 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 the basement windows, John? We we also, the basement windows, and we also have an existing, uh, those are the basement windows. And the H is the uh, existing uh, G Did blend. Open in or out? Uh, they would probably. I don't know. We could actually have them open either way, to be honest with you. I find it questionable to have those type of things. I would say outwards in the cell. I would, no, you can look into that. You know. Well, I would say that you think that's a good point that we would likely have them open in because we're in some areas we're so close to the sidewalk, we couldn't have them open out. It'd become like a tripping hazard or something. Okay. So they would open in. You could specify that. Right. Um, I think uh, I agree with that. Uh, Gave it 100 percent with the uh, to get that pediment on the top there with the elevator shaft, uh, extra four feet. The structure itself has proposed without that pediment is 34 feet from the ground. Mm -hmm. The main house is still is here now is 29 feet tall. Mm -hmm. So I think that anything above that height should be eliminated. Uh, I think we can reduce it. I, I think he's right. Uh, it's not appropriate up there, not appropriate looking for its style. So that's our question on that. Thank you. David, do you want to explain, because I keep getting this also, I get it from some of the historic structures, people, why the two Greek revivals put together versus the Mansard and the existing Greek revival farmhouse, whatever you want to call it, conglomeration of styles, why it is acceptable to change the style and era of an add-on came up the very first meeting. Came up the very first meeting, and there has been some feedback on this. Um, you know, one has been concerned about moving the historic structure, and I think again that the main point there is is that there's going to be redevelopment on this site, and that if you leave the existing structure where it is, it's all coming off. It's 
you know, one of its major features, which is that east-facing porch will be obscured from public view by later construction. And um, by bringing the building to the corner, you preserve for public view um, the historic structure that's been on the site that would otherwise be obscured. I got some of them off the ledge on that. It was the question of the Greek revival, like John said, versus the mansard, which doesn't track the main, the original house at all, versus the first first submission, where we said maybe go in a different direction. What? Have, you know, I, explain I, how that is rational. Is mansard with the Greek revival? Sure. You know, I, I think that the whole assembly, um, all in Greek Revival, taken together, is a grouping that's much larger than you ever would have found in period. Um, and neither does it tell any kind of story of additive massing. Um, the, the use of the building is going to be for a, a, a hotel, and the period in which hotels were built was the Victorian era. And so by making a distinction between the parts, you preserve um, clearly what's historic. You avoid creating a situation where you put an addition on that looks historic but isn't historic, that muddies the record. Um, you have something which is a clearly a, a later development. And you've chosen for the style which is the period in which the hotels were built in that area. Um, so it, it, there are not many places on the island where I think you can make this decision. Uh, but I think that on Broad Street, you can, particularly given the neighboring Victorians that are also guest houses. So that's why I just want to make sure that's on the record, because I yeah. know people are having an issue with this whole scenario. I, I, I have to... I'd like to add one thing I forgot. Uh, I find the, the, the most hottest thing about it is the precedent being set of mixing the two. There's none other on this island that's sponsored or anywhere. I think the precedent, somebody's going to see it and they want it, we're going to have to change that yeah, second. I don't know where they're going to get it downtown. Yeah, I, I, this you know, is I, the last I, lot you can do this on, but go ahead. I, I, I think that the circumstance here is very particular, and I, I have a hard time imagining there being a lot of other places where this decision would be appropriate. Um, There's also not, this is one of the last unbuilt lots where this can take place. Right. Everything else is built on. I agree with a lot of what David had said. I'm going to add a couple of things. As you know, I've had a little bit of an issue with the amount of program that's driving this thing up to 38 feet, and I said it with the planning board here also. I'm still having a problem with, I don't mind it being taller than the other one, it's got no choice. It's mm -hmm. going up the hill on top of it. Right. I think it's too tall. Even at 38 feet, which is where you are now, you were at 30 something. Now you're um, going to 38. Or is that just the top of that belt? We're actually okay. <coughs> I got blessed it. now. But I think it needs somehow to push down further on top of those second floor windows, which is what I think we were looking for the last time. And not just adding another piece of trim or increasing the uh, trim over the window. I think it needs to come down another foot. Um, that's a lot of program on that third floor. I, one of my biggest issues is the size of those E windows. I do agree with David and completely maybe two over twos because I believe the two Victorians up the street, don't they have two over twos? Yeah. I think that needs to go that direction and not the direction of the six over sixes in the original structure because then it really separates itself from the original structure to me. And then I can probably live with the shutters. But they're too big, too wide, too tall. I think you need to go back to the size you had when it was the um, Greek Revival and then figure out what the window style is. There, there might be... It's going to be a little bit this <coughs> way. I, I think that the, David's point is to go with like a bigger window. And we said just by adding another pane, probably maybe it, it's it probably like a, one step too big, mm -hmm. too large. So. Especially when you go over to the west elevation, those E windows, you humongous. Yeah. That's not appropriate over there. I agree with David, little C windows. You see these little bizarro windows tucked in? But if they're not six over sixes and they're two over twos, that might take the onus off those little windows on the alley. What do you feel about the double windows? I think the double windows here and there, we've seen them. Um, I think that just, to me, adds to the top heaviness of it. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe... So I think that... The that double works. windows on the they wall. They got to go. Yeah. 
I think they should not be double in the wall. I don't think this so structure either. would not normally have had double windows. No. Um, I agree with David, but I want to go one step further. That connector needs to be pushed back, entirely pushed back. I don't care if there's a flat roof behind this, because what that does by pushing it back, it even makes them more hidden behind those units up there. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather, frankly, have them because um, Vanessa Noel has them on the third floor on a platform. We have several of them up on the third floor. You don't even realize it down. Yeah, I just want them tucked down. I want them back. And the further back you push this whole connector back one more section, mm -hmm. one more window, mm -hmm. it'll be back there and you'll never see it. Yeah, I mean, I and I agree with David even on how they're accessing it, but that would that would also eliminate that second door out of the master. And there's no reason for them to access it. I don't want to see a human up there unless they're servicing those that, units. Well, I'm just going to throw put it out there. So we had the opportunity to create a flat roofed element that I don't think that you would notice, in you know, from an exterior perspective, you know, it's it's twofold. There's an opportunity for mechanical storage, but there's also an opportunity for a second floor deck area which I know mm. is, nobody's really no. in favor of, but I want to at least just put it out there so that we can say, you know, both planning board and or HTC are not in favor of it. Yeah, I'm not in favor of that. I mean, there are, one there. thing I would say is that the, you know, the Whaling Museum has them. There's, there's precedent for them. Hey, hey, land. I'm just saying that there is precedent hey, 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 for them. The Whaling Museum is a flat roof Matt structure. Matt, okay. put out there. Can okay. move on? Let's move on from the Whaling Museum. <laughs> and as I said at the, um, at the planning board, I don't know how this is going to work. This piece on the west that sticks out beyond the front facade. I think if I was only dealing with that, I would have very little comment. That's this second. piece is a problem to me. Okay. And it's, it has been from the beginning. It's, I will say it's, it's set back pretty far. It is, but I, to me it's not set back either A, far enough. But I think if you do something with the, like the Brotherhood side entrance with that porch, it comes all integrated across here. It may do to soften this piece. I just thought it was too wide. But if that porch is here, it may help. Yeah, I think okay. we can definitely integrate it. As opposed to what you have there. now, which is nothing. Um, two over twos. I think we pretty much banged it to death. I don't remember. I was in the basement with you. I don't yeah. remember which way those D windows go or if they're three over threes. I don't believe all those windows across the front should be awning windows of any kind. Matt, is the building coming up at all? No. We're taking it's just sliding over. We're taking the we're establishing a top of uh, finished floor, first finished floor elevation, maintaining that and sliding it across. It has windows in here now. It does. It has one I think it only has like one or two. Yeah, I think we're over over windowing this thing yeah. across the front, but I also think you ought to look at what those are. I don't remember if they're three over threes or on or they can't be on it because they'll open into the street as you said. So these can't be on. I think they need elevation. to be three over threes, but I also think there are too many of them across the front. We don't need to line these up underneath this first floor window. Let me clarify something too, because the site is sloping. Does are you have you established the elevation of the existing first floor and simply run the building across horizontally? Yes. Because those three basement windows look unusually far out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're just sliding the building across, you're picking up six inches or so yeah. in the process. I think that the building ought to have the same relationship to the ground in its new location that it had in its old location, and that will have the effect of lowering the mansard portion by that amount also. So it, it gets two birds with one stone. Um, the deal with these windows because if you look at the front, you've got seven across the front. You got gangs right around the corner on the west. You got three more. We'd likely ungang those on the west. Yeah, yeah. I think you got too many basement windows. I think you know. got way, and then you got one, two, another double, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the back. Then you've got the one on the. Front. There's got to be as many basement windows as there are windows on the first floor. And I think that's not appropriate. So figure out what you really want. We, okay. I mean, we do need windows in the basement. We have more flexibility on the historic portion of the structure because it's, uh, it's basically it's a, an apartment, <coughs> whereas the other areas um, we have less. Yeah. We can certainly I'm not that. going here. There's too many of them all over the building. I just, I think, um, I just want to add that the, the two doors in the front of the building, I think, should be more Victorian. Yes. That's right. The nine light. We, we were we were toying with what direction. I know David, you said the connector should be more like the mansard part. I thought the connector should be more like the Greek revival part. 
because I think it would have been not uncommon to have an addition. In fact, it does now have an addition there. Then it would have to be a Greek revival looking L. So I think this needs to go with this, which really sets it off, because then this piece looks like it's part of the original structure and that you just added the mansard part, and then get funky on the up so uphill side where the front door is. But I think this middle piece needs to get more like this. I think you can look at both. Okay. That's the other way I would go with this. Well, we did look at what your suggestion was, yeah. and it actually, we thought it was... Uh, here. It just looked more uh, schizophrenic, the building. You know what I mean, it was almost like you need, you know, um, it started, I felt like it wasn't as successful, but we can look at it again. I think the railing is schizophrenic. I'd rather, just rather see this building stand alone. There we are. Yeah. And all you do is stick this on. Okay. Because that would make more sense. I'll, I'll bring, we'll bring both options okay. so you can see. We'll think about the we have to think about the color issue, David, while we're driving around. Well, we have to run into uh, trenches. I just want to point out that 24 rooms, this is small in comparison to every other guest house in town. It started at 30, and now we're down to 24. 24. Surely you're not asking us to discuss use. No, but we have brought up programs, so that there's too much program, and I just want to point out that every other guest has 21 Broad Streets, 27 rooms. Well, the only reason I mentioned program is because it's driving up the massing, and I'm just trying to get it down a little bit further. I think Sarah's point is Without getting rid of the third floor, because that's if that has there. been suggested in the past. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Okay, so David, you made a motion to hold for revisions? I did. All those in favor? Aye. Can we tell me if I'm Hold on one second. Car. David, you want to make a motion to hold the garage? So moved. Really David's made a motion to hold the garage to track with the house. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's why I want to ask. What We need to know what the quorum is on WJG 21 and 31 Sparks Avenue. What number on the agenda? It's number the, uh, 20. Are we hearing the latest? Are we glad to be here? Because he's not going to get it. Can we hear that now? Yeah, let's hear it now. Linda, can I yeah. say something? Yeah. I'm going to lose my form on my number one Lady Bird at 245. Well, we're going right to Lady Bird after this. Okay, because I know that you have intent to leave at 245. Yes, yeah. we're going to Lady Bird the minute we're done with this. The only reason we were holding this is because we needed a topo. So this is just the partial this demo. This is just the partial, partial demo. demo. So that would be they need to get, they need to get okay. that part of the stop and shop okay. off now. You would ask for a telco. We're keeping the topography just as it is. Yes, and that okay. was the question, whether it was the, the eight-foot rise, six-foot rise, and staying and then just running the parking back where they're tearing the building off. That is the case. So they are not taking it down to uh, Spark Avenue level and then having to try to get back up to the existing store that's left of it. So that was unclear. And now Linda, it's John, David, Diane, yep. I also hear the previous concern. No, we know what they are. We just needed to have that clarifying. So, Sarah? I also brought, I think someone had asked to see the what the fabric was like on the side that would be yep. on the side of the building. Representing uh, the stop and shop w yep. WJG, is Sarah, Sarah Alger. Alger. Um, This is the fabric. This is not the picture, obviously. <laughs> So don't freak out. The side of it would be a, some sort of photo rendering of the actual side of the building as it is now. Okay. But it goes on like oh, that. Cool. It's attached. Is this a needle point that I have? Yeah, you can needle point it afterwards. <laughs> And, um, that's the material it's on. It's, 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 it's vegetative it's screening. In 20 years. It's going to look beautiful. By needlepoint, that will be really good. Cool. And once it's attached, it doesn't um, blow or... It doesn't go anywhere. It's stretched on a plane. Right. I saw the original one. Does anybody <coughs> have any more concerns here? David? Um, Sarah, yeah? this parking layout, as it abuts Sparks Avenue, 
Is this going to be the final leg proposed layout no. after the? Okay, so this is going to be amended. This is uh, going to be. It's going to have screening all over the place. Can I have the representative this answer? This is me? phase one. There's phase one, and then there's phase two, and then there's a final phase. Okay. This is the phase one part where just part of the building is gone. And okay. I checked with Andrew, and we're getting a full scale. <coughs> hardscaping plan that you're going to see also okay. and come in on a separate sheet. Okay. Yeah. David, I, I any other no concerns? I have no concerns. Abby? No. no. John? I don't know what is going on. Say it again. Okay. We are demolishing a portion of the existing stock and truck building yeah, yeah. Okay. and putting in temporary parking. Do you want to see this? Because you're going to be on it eventually. During the time period, Mona, while the new store is being constructed, so it's going to be like a six-month period where we're going to have this temporary parking area and the side of the building where it's been demolished is going to be covered with this mesh fabric, which will have a photograph representation of what the side of the building looks like now, just so it's attractive construction which, which side of the building is rented this? I don't see a note on here. Sparks. Facing Sparks. Where's the entry? Where it always has been, right here in the dark. Stay that same? Dark. Yeah. We're not changing the curb. We're not changing that. Well, I just wonder when you build your new building and the entry changes, will that still be there? What? The fabric. No. No, no because the building will be gone no. entirely. Because what's happening is to build, to build, the, we're trying to build the new building at the same time that we keep the existing store open because we can't will need a grocery store, so we don't want to close the store completely, which is what would be necessary. So while we're building the new store on the fire station side of the property, if I can call it that, the existing store gets partially demoed. The program of that store gets mushed down into the, what's left of the building. There's temporary parking the around building the building. Then when the new building is up and about to be opened, the what's re left of the building gets demolished, and then the new parking lot gets constructed. So okay. that entry, the pink area, is going to remain the entry throughout? Uh, yes. That's Nothing, the entry to, to the right to the remain what's remaining of this form. Correct. All right. We've been through this already with finances here. Okay. Any other concerns, John? This application is to demolish from this wall out. Is he not at the right. And then yeah. and then put that thing yeah. screening exactly. across it. That way this this application is not to demolish it. No. Okay. Uh, yes. I, have, I, have, I have a request yeah. for the commission. Uh, on my behalf. Diane, you're not on. At this corner right here where the villain is going to be. Last time, and I have okay. Yeah. Asked, Could you request that they put a height pole right he here sometime okay. uh, within a couple of weeks and notify the commission and our staff can notify us? Do we have to have a height pole showing up? Whatever comes to the eve there. We don't have the. Yeah, when the building's before you, that building isn't, isn't before the. HDC yet. We haven't submitted Great. that building yet. Okay. Well, when you do it, we'll when do we do, we want a height pole there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Got it. What do you do with this application? Is everybody okay with this now? Can Diane? I just ask? Yeah. Yes. One sure. question. We're losing, what, half the parking that we have now over here? For an approximately an eight-month period. Did you mention last time that there was going to be some satellite parking? Correct. Yeah, we're over dealing with that. Down at... Um, up Next down. to the Craig, well, what, what used to be the Craig property, and um, there's a Gulaki piece. Right, over there, past yes. by the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and then there will be a uh, walkway or something for people to come through to the store. That's where the employees would be, and they're going to be staging out of Ryder's property, which is across on the I other side. I know what Ryder's is. They're going to stage out of there like the post office and the bank did, and then they're going to use some of the satellite parking for employees, people like that. So they're not going to be in the main parking lot. That's all. No, they're not going to be, but people who are coming to shop are going to be in the somewhere parking. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, they could be in the parking lot. Okay, and that's coming up at the planning board. Okay, so I'm going to lose that. 
All right, okay. let's go. Sorry, right. David, do you want to make a motion? Uh, one question. How much, how much parking is there now? Uh, I don't know. Because there's 116 here. Yeah. Right, if you can get the answer, I'll let you know. Sure. Thank you. Um, David, make your motion. Motion to approve. Okay, thank you. David's made a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? John, where are you? Do we have a vote? Sample of that. Are you opposed? No, I'm in favor. Mark, it's unanimous. Terry? We have a sample of that. Just cut a corner off it. A picture of it or something. I don't know. We have a picture of it. They put it in the other file, but the last time, I don't know what happened. I mean, I'm just going to go. I just cut off the piece of this. Because you weren't here doesn't mean we didn't do it. So now we're at Lady Bird now. I'm going to waste my time. You have no idea what we've done for this week. All right, we need to go because we're going to lose the quorum. Can we have Lady Bird, please? Now. David, uh, for the record, David's leaving at, I have no idea what time that is, 2.23? And that was uh, Dawn, myself, and who? Abby. Abby. No John. No John, no Diane. Oh, oh, of course. Dawn, Abby, John, Abby. So, Mark, are you reading? Call for revision, but they're not yeah. listed. So I think the last time we were in front of you, there weren't that many um, concerns, but we were in a redesign process where we took some life out of the building. So the new application reflects that as well as some of the changes I think that were concerns on the east elevation, where the exterior stair was. So you'll see that we sort of took out that connector piece between the... So what's the front door? Okay, the front door faces south. Probably should be what we see first. Yeah, that's the, that's the front. So the front door. And if you look at the former. No, no, no. No, no, no. Not the door. Oh, that's not visible. So that's visible. But that, yeah. that was what we had approved before. Okay, so. so we removed this connector piece. So we sort of push that off. This stairway came off. Uh, we have a screen fork on the side. The door moved over this way because we got rid of that connector piece. So yeah, it didn't move more towards the center. Um, west elevation, we have some windows up here. We changed this door, we that's smaller now. Can you explain to all of us? I'm not. Actually, sitting on it. You're not, not sitting on it, John. Oh, sorry. You got it You Okay, so now you want to go to the this one? Yeah. I'll have a look at the front door. I'll be able to glad to show you too. I'm listening. Okay. Uh, so now, this is the side that faces north. Um, again, comparing it to what we had before, we got rid of the connector. That's the same. We changed the screen porch a little bit. Uh, looks like we widened this dormer. And over here, Changed that dormer a little bit, got rid of the stairway up, and changed the screen for it. It's hard to say it's not visible because it's on the highest part of the lot. No, I think the first thing is Because you're going from an elevation of down in the 20s at the road up to 38 at the house. It's 18 feet above the, above the, above the road. You're going to see this house. Taken by some of the weather inside. The request last time was for a viewer. Yeah. The grade changes. Huge out there, all over. Yeah. You go up and down the hill every time you around. Dawn? Um, I'm concerned about how that one dormer um, butts into the other red. They're consistent. Mm -hmm. Consistent. You no, said that the last time. I'll address it. It didn't get changed. It didn't. And I'll West tell elevation, you, you can see it on the left. Yeah. Of the gang, the four gang well. banging yeah. right into the other room. And I also have a problem with that. Um, I, I think you should eliminate this panel detail. 
the enclosed courtyard. Did you say you don't like it? I think you should eliminate it. I think it's too formal for the rest of the structure. You don't have I see that you added overhangs, and I'm not sure whether that was the right direction to go in. You know, the idea for this for this house was for it to be low and cottagey, and so we were really trying to get a lot of uh, sort of those, for lack of a better term, sconce it uh, overhangs. Well, you've got. You and they create shadow person. lines. And sorry, what? Let me get details that are coming out. Madam Chair, I can't hear anything. There's way too much noise. Everybody, stop talking, please. This meeting is torturous enough already. You can't hear, and, and staff can't hear on her, uh, for her purposes. Um, you okay with the mask? Yeah. Just put that dormer's problem. Yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abby, do you have anything to add? Um, just on the um, west elevation, the, the dormers don't, the windows seem to uh, swim in those dormers. Mm -hmm. Tighten up and this east elevation as well. The windows seem to just a lot float of, around yeah. in there. I think it would be so good. Anything else? No, can I just make a statement? No, because I'm not done. Okay. okay. I think it's overfenestrated, over ganged. Almost every single window is ganged. And I think that's way too much glass. It's way overfenestrated all over the structure. And then it then it gets weird because then it gets way underfenestrated in these monster dormers, which need to be tightened up all over the building. If you're going to see something, it's going to be up above probably the top of the first floor. I agree with Dawn on the panel. It's got to go away. I agree with Dawn on the connecting dormer. It's huge. It's got four gang windows in it. These dormers are all screwed up. There shouldn't be any shutters on the windows in the door. Bless you. That looks bizarre. I don't think there should be shutters on the structure at all, but I'm not going to die over that. But I just think the, the shutters are inappropriately located. Um, the dormers are a big problem for me. The one on the south is way too wide, underfenestrated. If it is there, I don't know. Then you're going to add another window that's going to be overfenestrated. The shutters are not helping you. They're floating in the dormers, like Abby said. Every one of them is either underfenestrated, overfenestrated, or too wide. So I think you need to readjust the dormers. I can live with the uh, massing, even though it's way atypical, because you've got that piece coming forward on the south, which is where the driveway is, if I recall. A piece coming forward on the south with a hipped bay which I don't think is appropriate at all. I don't mind that the gate is too much, but the hipped bay isn't completely inappropriate. And it's off center on top of it, and it's got shutters on it. It's not appropriate. Um, simplify the structure greatly to get rid of that. Uh, the glass porch doesn't bother me, as long as the panels are gone. So I think there's some issues you can work with, but overall the basic structures seem to be okay for that location. It's just that you've got some issues that either go this way or go this way or add a window or however you're going to readjust them. But they are. The windows are floating in them half the time, and then the one on the uh, west is a big problem. But on the first floor, that that set of windows, the, the way it intersects to the... Uh, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about um, the dormer windows and panel and, and, and just stuff like that, and then that dormer on the west. The, floor the one that's intersecting. Yeah. Okay. Too many windows okay. and it's intersecting. Can I just talk about the intersecting just for a second? Don? Ma'am? Yeah. Yes. Because because you, you've mentioned it twice. Mm -hmm. This has a low sing, uh, single story plate, and we're getting our room on the second floor from dormers. That's how we get the room. That's how we're able to keep this building with essentially a single story plate. Every now and again, you have to do a run on dormer to be able to connect, to be able to for physically hallway. get into that for a hallway, exactly. So my contention is that that will be very, very vis uh, visible at a, at a long distance. And there's another dormer going the other direction that I think will obscure. Do you want to share the 
energy yeah. from that. This one, well, right? I guess what, what I'm saying is that we go back and forth a lot on this. That shows where the other I'm just, I'm right. not, my claim is you really have to look for that to see it. the amount of windows. If you look at the original submission, that, well, that, that the original submission had it. I know. It was smaller. Yeah. And no, it had less no, windows. No, no. <coughs> that door was right there was smaller. Yeah. And it's now it's yeah, two it and a half times the size, right, and it right. didn't have four bank windows. Mm -hmm. so That's because we realized we had this, to do there. Yeah. But if it went back to something being smaller, close okay. one more section in, one less window, mm -hmm. I think it's going to disappear. That is not going to disappear. And you've got eight foot doors and a what? A ten foot first floor plate height? No, no. Because no. you got eight foot doors. We haven't done Seven, anything. eight doors. They're no, showing the measuring is eight, just so you know. And I think if you can get another down to the seventh floor, I think that would help some of the fenestration issues. But you've got to break through some of the, the ganging because yes. there's ganging right. everywhere. Okay. And that's that's seven way over length for a house of the simplicity, the basic simplicity. The door was seven six. Alright. So you wanna what's the colors I hate to ask? There it's cobblestone. Okay, great, love it. Motion Favorite color. Dawn's made a motion to hold for revisions. All those in favor? Do we need an extension on this? This? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Where did you go, Terry? Three, eight, two, fourteen. Three, eight, two, fourteen. That would be the just deadline date, the is that the deadline date? It says right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The deadline so we're going to need an extension. We're going to need an extension. Need an extension. Because we want to be able to file it. Even if we extension. approve it on the 18th, we can't mm -hmm. even file it on the 18th. Can I do that now? Yeah, do it now. Terry, do you have a copy of the uh, extension forms over there in the box? I have no idea where they are. I would suggest going to the office in the morning and getting it. I would actually extend. Go right to James now and do it. Well, we have more applications. Okay. Because otherwise we'll have to come back up and go off and be denied. All right, so that would be an extension. Okay. Yep. And now you got 79 EPR Road. Did he ever bring that over, Terry? Yes, right next yes to you? we have that. Okay. Sympathy for something that away for two weeks. Hi, Anna's is looking good today. Okay. <laughs> it was torture. So, who made that motion? I don't think I was on this. Uh, I went to an automatic view and had some in person. It's a full board. So, everybody sits. Well, we have pictures of the existing house and drawings of the existing house. During the May, sometimes we just get it done. Yeah, we get the pictures for that. These are uh, pictures of the existing house and also the context of the building. Where is this? We have oh, yeah, Road 79 at the way. This is this is the house moving. Yeah. This That's is going to Bishop Drive? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you have to finish that? We've been finding him in the ground. We're not involved in Yeah, we're not involved in that. We're just in part of that. So the back side of the house is. We've already approved um, it to go off. Because we need to approve it to get on. This is moving up to Bishop Drive. Do we have an old picture? Yep. Yeah. And there's contact. Oh, yeah, that's coming off, getting on. We're just trying to get the permit out of the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. John. John, John is on. John. Yeah, I have one comment. The house looks nice, except that uh, is the roof up decorative. No. Where is the accent? Oh, it's no hat. We would put a hat in the back. You get, to get us on that every time. time. All right, we don't have our chip okay. set going back and forth. We're going to lose half the board. What this house has, the other one doesn't have, is you got a lot more porch. But the body of the house is almost exactly the same yeah. size as the body of the house that's there now. The porches, the porches have added a lot of scale to it. John? 
I don't have an answer to my question. Is it on the front or rear? What do you think? It's going to be on the rear. Thank you. The north side. The, with the context of your point and everything, this is, this is a big symmetrical house, but I, I, there's not a lot of gang windows or anything that I find really inappropriate. I appreciate that the roof walk doesn't have a skirt. Um, yeah, those are a little bit square on the side lights. Um, yeah. I'm trying to keep it simple. It's white now. It's white now. I know. It would like white. It's white now. There's three buildings on the property that are white. There's three buildings. There's a garage, a house, and a garage. The other garage is not moving. All right. Well, uh, John. My comment. Thank you. Diane. I uh, think it's approvable. Ditto. Abby. Ditto. Thanks. All right, John. Do you want to make a motion to, uh, to approve it? With a roof motion to approve that. with a roof walk access hatch on the, rear. on the rear and on the front door for the side lights to be narrow so that the panes appear more vertical. The side lights themselves have to get narrow. Yeah. Right. They narrow the side lights. Can you repeat the about the roof walk? Yep, um, I the will. The roof walk hatch will be on the rear, which is the north elevation, and it will be a wooden hatch. And the side lights on the front door will be narrow to make the panes vertical. John's made a motion to approve through staff hatch, wooden hatch on the rear, north side. For the roof walk, side lights on the front door on the south elevation to be made narrower. So the paint become vertical. Yep. All those in favor of Don's motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It appears to be unanimous. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Doyster. Uh, somebody. No, yeah, only the hardscaping. The garage is coming up, and he wanted us to do that today. Val, was that going to be yours, Ethan? Some, was somebody said somebody was coming in for it. No. Ron, you mean? Yeah. He said he wasn't, wasn't going to be here. No, but he said somebody, he emailed me and said somebody was coming. So let's just look at it because he said he did what we asked him to do. This was a big thing from Tuesday night. Who's on it? Linda What? Linda John. Who? John. Linda. Yep. Dawn. John. Diane. He said he moved the location. He didn't move the location. I think these are old plans. Do we have another set of plans in there? Yes. Because he said he moved oh. the garage. It's not the location. Oh, I'm looking at the thought it was better off when they moved it also. And he said he put new plans in moving the garage. Those are for the Motion to hold until next week. Don's made a motion to hold the garage till the beginning of Tuesday's meeting. Okay. We'll figure it out before then. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That's going over, Terry, to Tuesday. Okay. Uh, Mr. Calhoun. Thank you, Mary. Another location to issue. Location to issue. He said he pushed it over. No, to the left, right. Other side. I don't know what happened. Quorum, Tuesday. Quorum. Tuesday. Thank you. She's making a good Yes, I know. She is on a daily basis. Okay. 
my blood pressure has risen <laughs> from it to that in the past hour. <laughs> David Barham, Abby, I know Linda Sapp, and I don't know if I am Sapp. So it's John, going on the window. You guys are definitely wrong. Where's my notes? Oh. Do we not have minutes or something over there? Not on that. So not on that day. It was the, the Thursday meeting yeah. that you had to go back and re vote on or something. Oh, there are no minutes for that. Yeah. So I know these three are on it. David was, but we lost him. I don't know. He John. wasn't. He's gone. Diane didn't come to that Thursday meeting. So it's Dawn, myself, and Abby. Go for it. Um, so the major concerns, I think David had a concern about the porch roof being too low. So we raised the porch roof in the front. We got rid of the shingle detail, which was also not terribly well received. We made the windows smaller in the dormers and got rid of the uh, extra space. No, John. Thank you. Um, they're a smaller window, but we're trying to make them lower, too. We changed the roof pitch to, uh, uh, 12 and 12. from a 12 to an 11. Um, and I think those were the major comments were for the front, because I think the, oh, we reduced some of the gang windows on the west elevation. There were two such the gang windows previously. We reduced those to single windows. We made some adjustments with some rear fenestration, although I think a lot of that is invisible. But there was some concern about the triple being under where the dormer uh, line came mm -hmm. down previously. We shifted that and we removed some of the windows on that west side. John? Those dormers on the north still seem heavy to me. I, I just don't know if it's, I, I think the double window configuration just isn't working on the front of the house. I think it needs to go to singles. And um, having the windows sit without any <coughs> trim or spacing yeah, they need to raise. before the roof is, is a concern. Um, I think the A windows are a little bit oversized throughout the first floor as well. Abby, anything to add? No, I agree with Don's comments. I got a couple of things. Um, yeah, they shouldn't sit on top of the porch roof. I know there's a dichotomy because you raised the porch roof. Now you got to figure out what to do with the dormers. Yeah, the dormers can come up, but I think that the double windows in each one of those dormers is too much. Maybe a double window in the middle one and singles on each side, but I think three sets of doubles is way over scale because it's a very simple structure. Um, one of the things I brought up the last time is... Uh, the west elevation, those A windows are too big. They should be D mm -hmm. windows. Mm -hmm. there before. And I think the second floor deck needs to be pulled back a little bit to get more roof in front of it. That's a very long deck on a very long dormer, I just don't think which is marginally that. visible because you're further out across. And we've had some visibility problems on the rears coming down Plainfield. But we're not on Plainfield. I know. You're in, but you're only halfway up that side, which is still exposed to the So that's why I'm concerned about the length of that deck. First off, on the dormer on top of it, and I think you should pull the the deck in and set it back maybe another foot so there's more roof in front of it. And then I think it's fine. But otherwise I think everybody's okay with the massing. Don's made a motion to hold for revisions. All those in favor? Okay, thanks Abby. Let the record reflect. Keep going. Can we keep going? Oliver. Looks like like Abby left at uh, 246. I'd be happy to go up before we go. 
John, how late can you stay? Because nobody can be heard. Okay. Nice to know we all have so much time. And I know you're right here. here. Oliver? He has come. Who's sitting? Linda, Don, John, Diane. Everybody, please. to the second floor deck on the north and the uh, east, north, the north and east, back and pull the deck back a foot from the uh, corner of the house. That's the second floor. Second floor deck. And on the west, I could put it back to the porch like it was in the original application where it ended at the window, but not yeah, right. the staircase. Right. 
Now, what about this keystone? That's in the kitchen, above the kitchen sink. Yeah, that's. Okay. You've got a keystone. Want a single one? Can you make it a double hung? You can. Okay, I can. Uh, why don't I just make it like the one next to it? An F window. Yeah. Okay. What, what is the, on the west elevation the to the this casement is going to become uh, a single F yeah. instead of a casement. Top sash. Yeah. Top okay. sash. Yeah. Don, uh, Diane, anything to add? No, I agree with what's been said on. Anything to add? All right, Don, make a motion. Okay. Motion to approve with the covered for first floor porch that appears on the south and west elevations to go back to the last iteration where it wraps um, around the corner. First, on, of all, first submission, wrap around. The on the east and north elevations, the second and first floor decks to come back 12 inches from the edge of the house. So it's only the first the, floor deck. Second floor deck. Second well, it's, it's second both. Because yeah, but it's not that. It's no, this is coming back. That's staying right where it is, holding up. Oh, it's, that's it's, right. it's this piece right here. This, this is where it ends. So this piece comes back. This piece. And this piece, I'll bring in the roof. Right. No, yes. that one doesn't yeah. back. Yeah. This one comes yeah. back. So yes. Just the west, east. Yeah. So east. Yes. On the east, excuse me. Right. So east, L, east, second floor deck comes this back in, right, 12 inches yes. right from the edge of the house. And on the west. That's the second floor. Yes. Yes. And uh, well, the first floor too. It's both. The whole thing. You have to shift the, the whole. Gotcha. Back. Um, <laughs> on the west elevation, the E window will be changed to an F to be lined up with the F below it. Yes. We need John for a quorum. John, they don't, they don't have a quorum. I, I can't sit the on the next one. one. They don't have a quorum on the next one. So motion to approve with those changes. So John's made a motion to approve with the covered porch on the southwest, south and west elevations to go back to the original submission where it wraps the corner. Thanks. East elevation, second floor, deck comes back a foot from the edge of the house. West elevation, the E window becomes an F window top sash. You got that, Terry? All those in favor? You didn't mark anything up. No, I. It's hard to mark it up because the first drawing actually shows it. Was that yes? Unanimous? Yes. Okay. Okay, that was who? Jackson. Jackson. Right, we've got the next one is Steve Cohen Trust. Well, it's not my house. <laughs> yeah. So I, think, I believe I it's John, later. myself, and Diane. Representing the applicant, Ethan and Stephen Cohen. What is the plan? Oh. There's concerns. Everything. Yeah. No visibility of the south elevation. There are mass massive issues in the north elevation down to the face of the street. There's a portion of our squat and all of this is clear to where the main mass is. The front door is recessed. Details about the exterior, the west elevation, the bump out, which one of the windows is not have it correctly. The chimney should be full of the terminal. East elevation is derived from the squat and work in the as long as they're too large. West and east elevation type K and type F windows should be hoppers. East elevation is too busy and will be visible. The chimney should be full of the front door. The chimney should be full of the front door. The chimney should be full of the front door. 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 The front so the game bell structure is okay. The game bells on the structure are not the proper form. The main mass is not called out and don't have our floor is located. The mass needs to be in the work in the space. The garage should look like a garage, but it can't go into the body of the house. This is a good spot. Start with those revisions. Yeah. Okay, I handed out the original approval for this property, which is by you somewhere. Yeah. It's on the side. Yeah. And then that house is approved on its lot, and then this is the replacement. What I did is I Simplified all the windows, got rid of all the, a lot of the poor lights, simplified the dormers, made the gambrel shape date more appropriate as gambrels go. I removed the trimming, I removed the front floor of the little gable room, removed the rear, the second floor of the gable roof, 
took the garage, widened the garage, and made a hip loop on the garage. Um, and I made the primary mass on the left larger to read as a bigger structure, but still keeping the building not short. By widening it, I made it fatter. Um, uh, I don't know. Got rid of the transoms above the doors on the east elevations. Um, on the west elevation in the little bay, added the window back so there's no square there. And um, those are in the rear. Those are underneath the port, the transoms. But, and then that's, I don't know, the... You still got quite a lot of problems. Diane? Uh... I still don't see sort of a bunch of additive massing. Um, well, I didn't want to make the building too tall, that's all. Right. We got that, but it's up there. What are we at? 28, 7? 27, 6. Yeah. Mm, I think it's 28, 7 on the, on the front. side. On the front. It's 20, on the street side, it's 27. Yeah, on the back, six. it's 12, 12, 12, 12. Things wrong with it. Down down. The west elevation over to the left hand side. This is that the garage? That wall? We're not going to be able to hear anybody else today. The garage. Because John's is on the east elevation. What's here? You gotta that is you gotta that's find the dining room bumper. Go find out who's sitting there. That's the garage door right here. Wait, what I yeah, that, that what's, what's that's the what that's the kitchen that wall that faces the neighbor. We don't want to. It's just right up against the other. You know, that a window? It's just, no, it's all cabinets in the stove. Because so it's a very seven. small, it's a triangle, very small lot because of the concrete. Right. We still have some major problems with this. The, uh, the hold this on. Diane, do you want me to go? Yeah. John, I'm going to go to you quickly. Mm -hmm. It's still got a lot of problems. You see how the gable ends with an extended rake, and the lower and the shadow board is even with the corner board. Not normal. This whole thing is something's wrong, radically wrong. With you need that. a six-inch overhang problem. Yeah, it's not right at all. Not the way the gables terminate are not right. The front door is an eight-foot door. That's not going to happen. It should not have open balusters. Um, is it just decoration? No. Um, this one foot bump out, not even a foot bump out, is totally inappropriate. What's in there? It's, it's the dining room. It's you like can't a have it. Okay. We, if it's going to be a bump out, it needs to be a bump out. We don't ever do less than 12 foot bump outs. Um, on the east elevation, you have a hip. East. east elevation, not appropriate at all on this gambrel structure. you got to figure out a shed or do something or break it broken back or something. But a hip roof over here with these huge doors is not appropriate. Figure out a different roof. It could be, it could be a little gambrel off the side, but it's not going to be a hip stuck into the side of a, a, a gambrel. So these overhanging rakes are not the appropriate overhanging rakes for a gambrel. You've got to figure out what I just is appropriate. Them from the so. yeah, it's, this isn't working. Because they terminate very oddly at a very odd <laughs> um, The yeah. rear isn't. We've already figured yeah. that out. So I'm really basically worried about the two sides and the north getting a little bit more normal. And your gambrels are not all the same. Uh, the same. Now, you get to the west gambrel, I don't know what happened to that gambrel. But that's not appropriate. And you, that's fully visible. And the way this intersects here and then at intersects there, there's got to be another way to, to massage this differently from the east and the west. And then you have to fix the front. The front in basically is not so bad. It's the way it's all intersecting. It's not something's wrong here. Really wrong. Where, where are you sitting? Between the front gambrel and the right-hand piece, it looks like the door is actually... This would be a wall. Yeah. And your door would not be banged up into where your corner board is. Yeah. It's, not, it's impossible. So this whole thing has to get sort of reworked. But this, with this on it, not so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so maybe I want to make a motion to hold for a revision. Make some move. I have made a motion to hold for revisions. All those in favor? All right. Done.
Okay. A lot of elements in this house are right next door to the knock cross property. I know. Yeah. So that was uh, unanimous is going over for revisions. That's as far as we can go because John is leaving. John, can you stay at all for a few minutes? What? Don's leaving. Everybody's going to sit who's left. That's going to be one tortuous meeting. Can we do something, though? We have to do it now. Dawn's going to make a motion to put all of the automatic views from March 4th on automatic view, which is, so which is at the very end of the agenda. Aye. All of those are going to automatic view. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so these are going to automatic view. That's one through six? Yes. Yeah, what about new business from March 4th? We had to put these on because we are way over the 10 days we had to hear them because we didn't meet last week. So all this new business came on so we could do something with it. Okay. Now, if they go on view, that's putting them off too far. This will go off to the 18th. All right, so everything else goes to the beginning of next week's meeting. Is that your vote motion? Yeah. yeah. Dawn's made a motion to put everything else at the beginning of next week's meeting. All those in favor? Aye. And we'll have to deal with the 60 days. Because some of these things have gone on too long. Dawn's also made a motion to adjourn at 3.03. .03. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks. Have to people have to be willing to stay and get this off, off, off. Because they missed you. Yeah. And we're going to have a second yeah. We already have a second We already have a second We already have a second And they're going to it's Tuesday. A new or an old? It's supposed to be new. It looks like it's going to be half and half. Lucy, do you know Joe Paul? Chris got out of Joe Paul. We work together. We all work together. Yeah, so we work on that. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I